Hi there. I wanted to do a quick rundown of a recent project that I have finished. Built using PCG and HLSL in Unreal 5.5. It is a procedural cell tower. It builds itself based on a few parameters. The max level, where we're going to start building the antennas, how many spokes we're going to use. So you can see over here, this is a three spokes and four, and then this version is five and whether or not we want to skip a random section. So we can easily punch those values in directly, or we can just decide that we want to randomize the cell tower and let those values be generated procedurally as well. So you can see here about the amount of time it takes to actually rebuild a cell tower. Not very long, right? Um, has a few interesting features. The cables are automatically generated at the bottom of the antennas randomly, and then they weave themselves through the scaffolding with a reasonable degree of success, I think, to avoid intersections. So we get a more natural look there. So I want to talk a little bit about the construction here, how this is all set up. There's a very simple blueprint that's going to generate a little bit of data for the PCG graph to use. This is if we're going to skip a section, which section we're going to skip. It's randomly calculated if the range is big enough. We can generate some location data to copy the points to where they need to be. And then we can also randomize our parameters. So that's really all the logic that's happening here on the blueprint. Most of it is happening in this PCG graph. But before we dig into this, let's open up a simpler level. And maybe make a little bit of space here. So I'm not going to go through the absolute nuts and bolts of it, but I will via debug show you what some of the stuff is doing. So this section here, the structural points is going to be generating the points on the outside that are used to spawn the horizontal struts, which are these guys the vertical struts, which are these, the central struts, which are the ones that, that uh, go from this point into the, uh, the central pole here. And then I think there's an angled strut around here too. So all that stuff feeds into these fairly simple static mesh spawners, not doing a whole lot of fancy logic there. This does adjust. If I set the number of points to four or five, we're going to generate additional data there. So you can see that update. I wanted to also spawn antenna in the midpoint here, so I needed to calculate that data and feed it in. So we can see what that looks like. That's happening in this line here. So you can see these gray points, which are created by averaging the position of these two points. The data that connects them is basically the index, but I'm writing it to uh, the steepness attribute because the index gets a little bit nuked because I call a bunch of points. So I'm able to figure out which two points are next to each other and then generate this point in the middle and use that in my antenna graph. The antenna graph is going to take in whether or not we want to skip any random sections. And then it's going to generate the frame mesh, the antennas, and the cable ends, which is where this data is being piped in. Let me go ahead and turn off the debug. There is an interesting feature where in the graph settings, you can add two well, in this case, two, two arrays, but you can add as many as you want. And then using this match and set data or match and set attributes node, it will randomly pull the same element from different arrays. So in this case, each antenna frame and antenna are aligned with each other. So for instance, we'll just go ahead and hop over to the geometry section. So there's going to be uh, antenna 11 and it works with antenna 11 frame. So when I pull one element, from the uh, antenna array or the frame array, I need to make sure that I'm pulling that same element from the antenna array. And that is the default behavior, which is very, very convenient. So once I've got the frame, the antennas and the cable ends all spawned in, I need to figure out how to generate the cables. So I'm using a pathfinding node, which is new in Unreal 5.5. To begin, I'm gonna just basically cover the antenna with points using a mesh sampler. And then we'll figure out which points are on the bottom. And then we filter everything else out. We're going to grab just a few of those. I'm going to split them up and then the end result is something that looks like this, where we have just a couple of random points generated on the, uh, the lower bounds of uh, whatever the antenna geometry happens to be. Do something similar to figure out what the target is going to ultimately be here for the cable ends. You can see the little points there. And then I'm going to generate a point cloud from all of that data, which is going to look a little bit like this kind of hard to see. But all that data gets fed in here to the PCG generate cables graph, which is going to just accept 
the start, the goal, and then the volume points, and it, it will create a path through all of these from the beginning to the end and give us a little spline. Let me go ahead and turn off that debug there. So you can kind of get a sense here what that spline looks like uh, by default. It's just picking the shortest path. But what I wanted is for the cables to drop a little bit, to come down rather than shooting directly towards the, uh, the center goal here. So I've got a little HLSL that modifies that data so that the actual points look a little bit more like this, right? So now we're getting that more natural curvature. And then all that stuff just gets fed into a, a spline mesh node. Uh, we've got two different options here, and I'm just randomly picking between one and the other in order to get a little bit more variety in there. I am using HLSL all throughout this graph to do specific custom edits to existing point data or to generate new point data. It is super powerful, and it's not really all that difficult to figure out once you've got the basics. I, I've got a free crash course you can check out right up here. I'll just show you a little example here. There's a bit of code, and if you're not familiar with code, it's probably going to look a little bit uh, intimidating, but it's it's not too bad. And also, you can you can get help from ChatGPT if uh, if necessary. Uh, I certainly did at various points. For instance, it's easy to calculate rotations in terms of Euler coordinates. So that's a circle that's 360 degrees, and if you want three evenly spaced points. The first one's at zero, the next one's at 120, and the final one is going to be at 240. But in order to pass rotational data out of HLSL, it has to be converted into quaternions, which is not something that I'm able to do. But you can find the function to do that fairly easily, and then you can just add it up here and call it where you need it. So you could do all kinds of fairly complex logic, you know, whatever, whatever the task requires, directly here in HLSL. And the other benefit of HLSL is because it is executed on the graphics card. If you're dealing with a lot of data, it's more efficient than doing it with the standard nodes here, which are executed on the CPU. I'm planning on doing more high-level tutorials on PCG, but this is probably it for this project. If you have a handle on the basics of working with PCG and feel like this is the kind of thing you'd like to build, this project is available on FAB. I'll include a link in the description. It's well organized, thoroughly commented, and between debugging and inspection is hopefully pretty easy to understand. It includes the blueprint, the PCG graphs, all the HLSL, and the geometry materials and textures. Please feel free to leave any questions in the comments section, and thanks for watching.